Hey everybody, uh, here we go. We've got the headlight helper here, uh, ready to do an unboxing and installation video. Uh, we've shipped all the pre-production units and we have opened regular ordering. So make sure you get your order in. Um, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go through each item, what they do, uh, then we're gonna cut to the truck, uh, take a look at what uh, is involved in the installation. Um, and then, um, yeah, hopefully you guys place an order and uh, get these installed in your truck. Uh, for those of you that don't know what this does, the headlight helper will allow you to use the 11 to 16 or 2008 to 2010 headlight switch uh, in your 1999 to 2007 Super Duty or Excursion. Uh, it will retrofit your truck with auto lights if it didn't originally have it. It'll enable your auto lights if you did um, have it. It'll add uh, fog lights to the 1999 and 2000 trucks and any 2001 to 2007 truck that was not originally equipped. Uh, it will also allow you to have interior dimming using either the 2008 to 2010 uh, roller style style dimmer uh, or the 11 to 16 rocker style dimmer um, obviously get your dome light working all that kind of good stuff so basically you get full functionality of the uh, of the headlight switch so um, when you place your order your uh, this will be included in the box but you'll either receive the 2008 to 2010 uh, headlight switch plug and play harness um, or you will receive the uh, 11 to 16 uh, headlight switch plug and play harness for the uh, 11 to 16 uh, it has two connectors it's fully plug and play uh, on the uh, switch side there's there's nothing to it uh, all you got to do is plug it in uh, on the 11 I'm sorry on the 2008 to 2010 uh, the headlight switch portion is plug and play and then there's four wires and you'll have to use your original connector from your harness uh, for the roller dimmer and there are four blunt cut wires that you will connect that are explained in the instructions. So with that, let's go ahead and open up the box and we'll take a look at what you're going to receive. All right, so the first thing you've got here obviously is the instructions. And it's gonna go through and very similar to all our other instructions if you have uh, purchased our other products, uh, tells you what you're going to receive. Um, that way you can double check, make sure you've received everything you're supposed to. A quick look at the uh, headlight helper itself uh, so you can get familiar with it with its functionality um, of course we always do unboxing and installation videos so we highly recommend our customers uh, go to the website watch this video for instance for this product and the other installation videos we have as well um, this covers the wiring of the four uh, wires for the dimmer switch on the 2008 to 2010 uh, headlight switch uh, like I said, that connector is not included and uh, you'll have to provide your own and wire those four wires. It's pretty simple and straightforward. Um, now, it's explaining here that there are multiple applications. Uh, for instance, if your truck originally was equipped with auto lights, um, then you'll want to connect this uh, blue, uh, dark blue white wire to this particular spade connector. Uh, and you want to connect circuit uh, 57, uh, which is the ground circuit. Um, that's if your truck originally came with auto lights. Uh, this is if your truck did not originally come with auto lights and uh, we're retrofitting it. Uh, it tells you how to wire the sun load sensor. Um, you got to tap in for ignition so we know when the ignition is on. Uh, no matter the application, you're always going to have uh, circuit 57 connected no matter what. Um, then we tell you where to tap in for the uh, ignition uh, circuit 640 so that the headlight helper knows when the ignition is on. Um, for the 1999 to 2001 uh, cluster helpers that are wire in, meaning you had to cut the original connectors off and wire in our connector, um, they have to be connected directly to the cluster helper uh, and disconnected from the light blue red if you have it connected to that or whatever else you may have the illumination input, uh, which is uh, position D1, it's a yellow wire from the cluster helper. Um, that needs to be connected directly to this spade connector uh, for the illumination to function properly. Uh, this is not required on any of the plug and play cluster helpers uh, that we offer. Now, another important part of this, you will have to make sure that you wire this uh, directly, the yellow wire directly from uh, this position to yellow D1 at the cluster helper, which is illumination in. You will also need to update your cluster helper. Uh, I believe uh, the latest firmware is 1003. It needs to be 1003 or later uh, for the dimming to uh, function properly uh, in the 99 to 01 wire in cluster helper. This is not required, like I said, on any plug and play um, or 2002 to 2007 cluster helpers or anything like that. Only if you cut your connectors off and had to wire in the connector for the cluster helper. 
So you'll disconnect that from the light blue red. Uh, you'll connect it directly using the included yellow wire, which we're gonna get to in a moment. We've got all of these little retrofit packs to go through. Um, and uh, uh, and then that will get you, and, and make sure you flash to the 1003 flash or later, and then uh, your, your interior dimming on the cluster itself will function properly. Uh, if you have a 99 to 2000, or you have a later model truck that did not uh, come equipped with fog lights and you would like to add them, uh, you will use the included jumper, which is right here, which we'll get to these in a moment. Um, and you will wire it up exactly as it shows here, and then you'll be able to run uh, fog lights uh, in your truck. One thing to note is that the uh, when you wire this way, that the park and fog light circuits will uh, share the same um, circuit at that point, so you don't want to overload it. And that's typically not an issue uh, unless you're using um, tons of incandescent lights. If you're running LED fog lights or whatever, it's not going to be a problem uh, at all. Uh, we go through the various modes. Uh, that you can expect to see like uh, if you have an 11 to 16 headlight switch uh just like all our other products then it, the uh, led indicator is going to be blue if you see solid blue that means that the headlight helper is uh on and awake uh and it's in 11 to 16 mode with the dome light off if you see solid purple that means the headlight switch is in 11 to 16 mode uh, with the dome light on and then if you see it breathing from blue to black or blue to off um, that means the 11, it's in 11 to 16 headlight switch mode with the auto lights uh, active. And then lastly, if you see it breathing from purple to red, uh, that means the uh, headlight helper is in 11 to 16 mode with auto lights and the dome light on. And essentially it's the same for the uh, 8 to 10, but instead of blue, you have green. And so when you add the red for the dome light, then it turns uh, yellow. Um, and then going from uh, green to off or green to black is auto lights active and then uh, from yellow to red uh, is 8 to 10 mode with auto lights active with the dome light on. And then if solid red, the only time you're going to get solid red is when you're flashing it. Now, one thing we do mention is that you do not want to flash or update or even connect to the headlight helper when the auto lights are active, when you're driving around, uh, because it could cause the headlights to flicker. Um, only in the auto mode. I mean, if you have it like engaged into the regular lights, it wouldn't. But just as a safety precaution, we do not want customers operating their vehicles uh, you know, with the, uh, connect, connecting the USB cable, uh, while the headlights are in auto mode as it can cause them to flicker. Uh, there's a safety mode. Essentially, if sun load sensor gets disconnected or shorted during operation, when the headlight switches in the auto mode, the headlights will turn on and will not turn off until either the ignition is turned off or the auto light, uh, the switch is turned from the auto light position. Uh, so that's just something to be aware of. So if they come on and stay on, that means you've got an issue with your sunload sensor um, and it's seeing both the auto position of the headlight switch and the uh, ignition uh, is on uh, at the input. Now, uh, obviously, if your truck, this is only in auto light retrofit applications. I should have mentioned that uh, this if your truck originally came with auto lights, the safety mode, um, you know, the uh, ignition input, all that is irrelevant because you're not going to connect any of that. Your, if, your, if your truck originally came with uh, auto lights, then you're only going to connect the one wire, which should be right here. You're only going to connect this one uh, dark blue uh, white and then the uh, ground, obviously. And we're just talking about the truck functionality. All these positions on the outer section are going to be used by pretty much every truck. Uh, these are kind of optional, depending the exception of the ground circuit. Uh, depending on your options and uh, and what you're doing with your install in your truck. Um, and we'll cover this when we go out to do the install. But uh, the only one that may your truck may not have is the fog light. Uh, but everything else is going to be used. <clears throat> um, we provide the part numbers uh, for the sunload sensor and for the uh, pigtails if you need them. Um, we include diagrams of each uh, headlight switch for each year model so that way if you have any questions what a particular circuit is we also provide the pinout for the uh, sun load sensor which is the same from 2008 to 2016 um, and then of course our information page regarding the product something to note uh, if your truck originally um, came equipped with auto lights you will need to use your original sun load sensor in the front of the dash you can't use the 2008 to 2010 you're going to have to uh, modify it 
uh, put it in the housing or do something so that you can put your original sunload sensor up there at the front and leave the factory wiring intact. The only time you're going to use the 2008 to 2016 uh, sunload sensor is if your truck did not have auto lights and you're retrofitting. Um, one other thing that might be included we'll touch on is this little uh, high beam flicker fix. Uh, some customers, especially with E99s, uh, had an issue where uh, with the wire in, again, that's the cluster helper where you cut the connector off and wired each wire individually for the cluster helper. Uh, their high beam indicator would come on when they would turn on the, the low beams or it could flicker sometimes, uh, even though they're not on. Um, and I won't go into the whole technical explanation of what the issue is, but long story short, uh, you will receive one of these resistors to uh, crimp in the middle of the high beam circuit between the um, truck side and the cluster helper side, and that will alleviate that issue. Okay, moving along to what is inside. Here's the actual headlight helper. And uh, as you can see here, it's already got the relays pre-installed. Uh, and that way we've already tested these relays to make sure everything that goes out is, is good and functional. It's been tested on our quality control jig. And um, uh, so moving on to the next item. Uh, so this is the fog light jumper. Uh, the way it works is it jumps from the uh, park out to the uh, fog supply. Uh, and then you can basically connect the park output uh, to this spade connector. The uh, 99 to 01 uh, wire in cluster helper retrofit. This is going to be the illumination output from the headlight helper to the input of the 99 to 01 wire in. Again, cut the connectors off and had to solder it in uh, cluster helper. And that will get you the uh, correct interior dimming on the cluster itself for, those, for that model of uh, cluster helper. Uh, this is the auto light retrofit. If your truck did not come with auto lights, then you're going to tap into that ignition. Uh, circuit 640 and run it over to the headlight helper uh, and uh, connect it with one of the included spade connectors. And uh, it's an add a fuse, so basically you'll just leave that fuse in that position. You'll pull the original fuse and put it in the lower position and then insert this. And then we've got the spade connectors and the shrink wraps. Uh, the shrink wraps you're going to use for uh, some of these wires that you're going to have to connect, like in the retrofit applications and things like that. The spade connectors you're obviously going to use to connect to your wires. Uh, from the original uh, truck headlight switch uh, connectors and uh, that way you can connect them directly to the headlight helper. And lastly, we've got the uh, USB cable. We send you a spare relay and two zip ties which you're going to use to attach the uh, headlight helper into your truck. So uh, with that, that's pretty much everything. Um, we're going to go ahead and jump out into the truck, uh, show you the installation, uh, how that process goes. Um, and then we'll jump back here to the shop and uh, finish it up. So we're out here ready to do the install in the truck. Uh, this is a 2012 dash uh, in the 2003 F350 Super Duty. So um, what we've done is pulled this uh, defrost panel uh, over here off the side. You can see the column helper in there. And you can also see uh, now I've already cut the connectors off of this, but this is the uh, uh, headlight switch harness. Um, and there are originally two connectors. Uh, you're going to be left with two additional uh, wires, which we mentioned in the instructions, uh, one of which is going to be uh, ground, the black wire, and the other is the park out. Long story short, it's pretty simple. All you're going to do is cut uh, wire by wire. You want to make sure your battery is disconnected when you do this because some of these are hot and you don't want to arc to ground and blow fuses or cause an issue. So uh, we'll basically take the uh, connector cut one by one, and then you're going to crimp uh, the included spade connector uh, onto the wire. Now, it's really important. This is what you're going to use out here for the installation. We've got a drill because we're going to uh, mount the headlight helper inside here. Um, we've got a Sharpie to mark the points that we're going to be drilling. Uh, we have a, a pair of crimps. Now, this is really important. You'll see that the... The crimp is on this side of the uh, tool. You do not want to use one where it's back here and you're trying to crimp it down like this. You'll never get a good quality crimp. You want to buy a nice solid set like this uh, so that you get a good quality crimp out of it so you never have to worry about it coming apart. And this is especially important because we're talking about uh, the headlights. So to give you an idea of where the headlight helper actually goes, um, a little difficult with one hand, but basically going to go about like that. Um, 
the uh, the connector will come out from the bottom down there and uh, and then it'll plug into your headlight switch now as mentioned in the instructions what we're gonna do is we're gonna pop this panel off and then uh, we're gonna take the headlight helper and basically we're gonna put it approximately where it's gonna go we're gonna mark the two spots now obviously this this piece will be removed at that point because obviously you don't want to mess up this piece um, because obviously that's the outside and people are going to see that. Uh, we're going to mark the two mounting points and then we're going to drill two holes, one for either side. And then we're going to uh, drill a hole on either side of those so that we can use the included zip tie to mount it. So um, again, you're going to want to take your original uh, headlight switch uh, connectors, uh, cut them off and put the included um, spade connectors on there. Uh, like I said, these two in the instructions, it says cut them off and cap them with the included shrink wraps, which you definitely can do. Um, now we designed the headlight helper to mount here in this particular position because most of our customers have already done their dash swap. And this is a retrofit application where they don't want to have to pull their whole dash out. If you're doing a, uh, like a fresh build, you can mount this elsewhere in, in the dash uh, back behind uh, everything. Uh, so keep that in mind. But but the spot that we've got is easy to access um, uh, and uh, uh, should work well for most applications. One thing to note, if you have a lower option dash that does not have a removable end cap uh, like this dash does, then you're going to have to secure this with double-sided tape or come up with another approach because obviously you don't want to drill holes through yours since it's, your end cap is attached. So uh, keep that in mind. So give me a moment, I'm gonna pop this off and then we'll, we'll get back to it. So the end cap is now removed uh, and you see you can get quite, quite a bit of access to everything going on here. You will have to remove or at least loosen this um, uh, cluster bezel because the uh, end cap goes underneath it. So keep that in mind. Um, so regarding the holes that you're gonna have to put in uh, to mount it. So what I did is uh, I held the Light helper up here about like this. Uh, just kind of rest the screws, uh, the bottom screws on uh, those uh, open rectangles there, and kind of got it lined up where I wanted it, and then uh, drilled the two holes through. Now, what I did also is I put uh, drilled a hole here because the zip tie's got to go all the way through, and same thing on this side over here. So, uh, what I'm going to do now, now that I've got the holes drilled, and you can now put the headlight helper in if you want to uh, kind of see where it's going to uh, line up and where it's going to go. It's going to go about about like that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and connect all the wires to it and uh, uh, and then get it zip tied in place. So let me get all the wires connected and then I'll show you the process of getting it installed. Okay so I got all the wires connected to the headlight helper. Uh, this is a 2003 truck that was originally equipped with auto lights. So uh, every uh, Every truck is going to have, uh, from 1999 to 2007, truck or excursion is going to have uh, the ground connected there. Um, if you had, your truck either came with auto lights or didn't. If you, um, if your truck came with auto lights, then all you're going to do is connect this uh, blue-white wire, uh, and then that will uh, tell the truck uh, if the switch is in the auto lights position. If your truck did not come with auto lights, then uh, you're going to connect to those uh, other two spots. Uh, some of this stuff... I believe we've already covered so uh but moving along you're going to use uh no matter whether your truck uh came with auto lights was a 99 uh you know or 2007 uh you're going to use all all of the positions all the way around with the exception of the uh, gym module out uh the white red uh that's only going to be 99 to 2001 uh but you know you're going to have interior dimming on all of them uh you know dome out um, now, if you have a 99 to uh, 2000, um, your truck did not come with fog lights. It didn't offer it. And so in that case, you use the fog light jumper, which we covered earlier. Uh, and then you have to wire your own uh, fog light output. Um, so what I'm going to do now is get this in and get the zip ties loosely installed. And, uh, and then we'll, we'll get it uh, ready to go for final installation. All right, so now we've got the two zip ties around. I've got the headlight helper in position and the two zip ties coming around either side. Um, now I haven't tightened them yet. I uh, left them kind of loose just so you can 
get an idea. Now you've got to make sure that you put the head of the zip tie on the inside because uh, you don't want anything to obstruct uh, the end cap when it goes on. Now these will be tightened down and pressed up against the edge so it won't impede the install, uh, the installation of the end cap. Uh, but you do want to put the, the head of each zip tie um, uh, on the inside. So uh, you can pull them tight. Um, I went ahead and brought the connectors out that are going to connect to the uh, headlight switch itself. Um, you can just go through with either side and pull the, the zip ties. Again, difficult to do with one hand, but um, you want to get them nice and tight uh, so that way the uh, zip tie will lay down flat against uh, this portion so the end cap can go on. So let me go ahead and do that and then we'll uh, show the final installation of the end cap. All right, I've tightened down the zip ties. Uh, you can see the headlight helper is in there. It is not going anywhere, uh, nice and cinched down. Now, I went ahead and connected the um, connectors to the headlight switches in the end cap, and uh, now you can reconnect your battery and go ahead and test uh, all the functionality. You wanna make sure that your, uh, your uh, headlights work, so you can hear the headlight chime, um, your fog lights, uh, Auto lights obviously have to have the ignition on. Yeah, you need to have the ignition on for uh, for all your testing, but uh, I'm just doing this real quick just to show you. Um, you want to when you have the auto light mode on, you want to put something over your sunload sensor on the front of the dash. Make sure the um, uh, headlights turn on like they are supposed to, um, and uh, and basically check everything before you button it up. Uh, that way, in case you missed a wire or anything like that, um, you can deal with it while it's uh, still apart. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is that uh, you will want to, uh, as we say with all our products, go ahead and connect the USB cable and put it in a spot where you can access it. Um, the way this one's done with the um, with the fuse panel here, you have easy access to right here, so you could easily leave the USB cable there. Uh, we have some customers who install uh, USB ports elsewhere in the truck and run the cable over there so they can plug into them in the center console or whatever for upgrades and flashing diagnostics or anything of the like. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, end cap uh, reinstalled. Uh, I've tested the lights, everything looks good, uh, and we're ready to move forward with final installation. All right, everything is back together. Uh, everything's working like it should. Um, now we've got full access to use the 11 to 16 headlight switch in this case. Uh, if you bought it for 2008 to 2010, uh, then you'll have full functionality with that as well. Um, so everything's looking good. Uh, let's get back to the shop and finish up. Okay, hopefully that uh, made everything pretty clear on the installation process uh, and answered your questions throughout this video uh, regarding the installation. If you have any additional questions, uh, feel free to shoot us an email. Contact at swaphelper.com and we'll help you get straightened out. Uh, this product is available for sale on our website at www.swaphelper.com. Thanks for your time.